uh, transition us to agenda topics. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> I like to, I, part, this is right. Part of what I want to do, especially with the weeklies is to have some bridge over so we can talk through I, you know, news of the day and introductions and, and, and get to know new people. Cause one of the things that we don't get with conferences is the opportunity to meet new people. So, um, and then, and so we, we started, we have some, some collection we're doing on, um, different ways that we could do breakout spaces. And so if you see those, we'll keep collecting them. I'll, I'll, we should roll them into the notes too. I posted the transcript and I switched my video feed to my camera feed to be, um, I, don't want, I don't want to share the screen because I don't want to force anybody to, to see that uh, if you want to do shared notes, but if you pin my video, hopefully you'll be able to see it well enough. If that's, what you're, if that's what you want to do. Um, and there, there were two things that I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure we talk logistics to the, people, the extent that people want to talk logistics for this. Um, I'm okay if we keep it minimal. And then my hope was that we got really excited about these disaster scenarios planning, and I thought we, we pivoted there. So I was hoping we would expand that topic out and then identify a couple of speakers or a topic leader who wants to organize the next series of conversations. So before we get there, I'll do my, my short logistics spiel um, on what we're doing. So the, the goal for Cloud 2030 is to have great conversations about where cloud goes and define the future, help identify the future. And to me, it's really important that we get to a point where we actually write things down, um, concise ideas that talk about where we think where we want things to go. Because if we don't do that, then it's gonna be defined by the, the big vendors of the day. And so um, I don't, I think, I think there needs to be a counter, counter force. Even if it aligns with what their vision is, I think there needs to be an operator voice here. The logistics well, I think of that, doing, yeah, go I ahead. think Rob, you know, the question maybe just to be a little provocative is, Please. you know, what drives what? Does the vendor drive the customer or does the customer drive the vendor? Which is your opinion? The customer drives the vendor because without the customer, this is all just academic. So, um, so is the question in the past or in the future then? Because I disagree if it's in the past. No, not in the past, uh, in the future. Okay. Going forward. Because in the yeah, past, I mean, the vendors have been driving the customers. Well, yeah. Mm, I mean, I could probably argue that the other way. Holy cow, there's a massive raccoon going through my backyard. Um, I, I could probably- What's sorry. his opinion on Squirrel! it? Squirrel! <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. I could, I could show you. Um, I, we could probably argue that, but quite frankly, again, I think the past is the past. You know, we should look toward the future. I mean, that's really what, where the energy should be sent. And I do think it's the customer that, that drives the vendor or should be driving the vendor. Should be, I agree with that. Yep, definitely I, agree with the should be. And, and I guess, Tim, from my perspective, if, if, the, if, if we don't have people coming together to say what, what we want it to be, I think it will be the vendor. The vendors are gonna fill that vacuum. They want to fill that vacuum. Of course, of course. But I think this is where we can, we can take a leadership role. I mean, let me back up for a second. There's an incredible dearth of leadership that exists in technology right now. And what I mean by that is there are, there are some futurists out there that are kind of poking the bear um, at some level, but there really isn't good guidance that's, that understands the challenges that both the customer and the vendor are facing right now. And so the vendor is trying, to, generally speaking, is trying to do what they do, the way they've done it in the past, but trying to evolve. The customer is somewhat lost, but knowing that they need to make a significant change from a business standpoint. But there's no one that's kind of sitting in the middle saying, okay, I see both sides of this equation, and I think I can come up with a formula to help everyone come together. That's where I say the dearth exists. That's where the vacuum exists. And I think that's where we have an opportunity to fill in some of that vacuum that exists. Tim, can I riff off of that for a second and ask, like, 
is that sort of like a DevOps discussion, but at a bigger level, which is um, like in the DevOps discussion, right? The developers and the operators don't necessarily speak the same lingo. They don't understand the complexities on both sides. In zooming out to a aperture of the vendor to the customer as sort of a, a similar type of, the language gap is there. They don't really understand each other, so they talk past each other. And so if we could actually think about it from that kind of lens, maybe just put a sort of a DevOps spin on this as, as a vendor to customer kind of connector. Yeah, so, you know, I think you're, you're on to it there. Um, there is this challenge of, of folks kind of talking past one another. I mean, I've been in a number of executive forums where it's been executives from some of the biggest enterprise companies on the planet and executives from their biggest customers. And I watch it and they think they have a good relationship and they have a decent relationship, but they're still talking past one another and it's not strategic in nature. There's so much opportunity there and they're just scratching the surface at this point. I think you're absolutely right, you know, but I, I would just caution about using DevOps. I understand what, why you brought DevOps into it, um, you know, to try and articulate kind of that difference between the, the developers and the operations and how they were talking past one another and really not addressing the needs of each, each uh, type of organization or persona. Um, you're right, it, it is much bigger than that. It's not, it, it doesn't have to do with DevOps, but I think I understand your point. It is a bigger issue. You're right. And, and I'll, I'll say we have, one of the things that we've done with the Cloud 2030 is we have, there's two tracks that we can use with this. We have a weekly DevOps lunch and what, what I've been doing is a DevOps lunch and learn, um, which is sort of tactical tech. And we do, we'll do some vendor presentations and things like that. And then this, this session was, was structured as sort of a futurist, you know, defining the future type of thing. Um, and then, but, but Tim, you're, you're saying I, I, what you're saying, what I was trying to say really succinctly, which is we need to describe it so that there's a voice. Um, and and so, I'm, yeah. how do you want to do that, Rob? I mean, do you want to kind of group think through that process or do you want someone to kind of take the lead and, and kind of maybe come up with a straw man that, that we then can shoot arrows at and try and make it better? Or how, what's the process you want to do to kind of drive that, that context? So what I'm, what I'm hoping we'll do is we'll have a big session in November where we, where we have a, like, like, find, like put together, um, won't be a final document, but, but a, a, a statement. And, and that we'll do a three hour session around defining that statement. That's, that's the end, right? So it's not the end of the process, but it's a, it's a, to me, it's a target. And then if you work backwards from that, we actually have to have a whole bunch of working sessions before we put that together. So we, we need to enter that with a straw man, to use your, your word on that. And then, that would give us a chance to basically like have a, con a you know, a, a cloud 2030 Congress um, where we discuss the, that, that statement and then we will, we'll keep refining it um, over time. But then, and then if I, when I work backwards, I'm like, all right, so we, every week we should be pulling apart something to discuss that would be part of that document or part of that, you know, the, that, uh, yeah, the state, the statement of vision. I get you. Um, I guess what I was wondering is, do you think that this could provide a, the straw man, um, could provide the context and guidance for the rest of the conversations that maybe some of the subgroups or other aspects of this might have? You know, something for them to tie up to so that you don't end up with just spaghetti going all over the place. I, and that's, I actually think we, what we need, what, what I'm thinking to do is that we're going to have a certain number, like a quarter of these sessions are going to be straw man sessions from that perspective, like building the straw man and, and watching it come together. Or we might even, depending on the people's urgency or desire, 
we have a ton of these, if we fill all the Thursday topics, you know, I'm okay to do another, another working set of working sessions around this stuff um, and pull people's interest off. But that's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking that we're going to be building up those themes and then, and then building it out. And we've already, like in the last meeting, the, we, we spent a whole bunch of time doing these, these general themes of what we think is going on. Um, and so what I, what I was doing is trying just to have, this has got to be a community thing because it's not, I don't, Rob doesn't, <laughs> Rob doesn't want to write the, uh, and Rob's, Rob's coworkers don't want Rob to write the straw man and then present it. It's, it needs to be something where people say, this is a topic that's really important to me. And then I'm hoping, you know, individuals here and individuals in the, in the community will say, I really care about multi-cloud. I really care about edge. I really care about open source. Um, I really care uh, what Gina came in and said, I really care about automated, um, you know, uh, human, the human consequences of automation. Um, right. But, but kind of, sorry to short circuit this no, that's a fine. little bit. Please Rob, keep but, moving. Well, but I kind of want to go to something Duncan just posted in the chat, which is what I was also thinking about here with the context is, you know, what mm -hmm. are we doing? Who's it for? Why are we doing this? You know, it's the, it's the classic why question. And I think I asked that in our last call is just, mm -hmm. what's the purpose? Where, you know, what, what is our guidance? What is that context? Because everything else to me kind of fits into it. Otherwise you do end up with spaghetti with all of these, um, I don't want to use this word because it sounds very detrimental or uh, negative, but all of these pet projects that kind of spin out pet topics, right? Mm -hmm. And so then I think it provides better guidance to prioritize and say, here are the things that are most important for us. So I'll, I'll go back to something I know all of us are really familiar with, or at least most of us are really familiar with, and that's OpenStack. You know, OpenStack was a great concept but it kind of dropped off the rails for a number of different reasons. From my perspective, one of the things that I think really hurt it was, A, there really wasn't good governance to it, and B, all of these pet projects started to take over more so than the core. And so the core really languished because of it, and without the core, <laughs> the pet projects are, are really troublesome, right? Um, I'm hiding my eyes, because that was your, that we watched that train wreck happen in slow yeah. motion. And I, so, I agree. Yeah. And so that's why, Rob, I'm, I'm really passionate about this because I think this is what you're tapping into here. And I brought up the, the data, you know, kind of data 2030 is a joke, half, half serious, half joking. But I think that if we have that guidance and that North star, then the rest starts to fall into place where we can answer questions like what Duncan had posed of who is this for and why is this for them? And then all of these other pieces start to come into come into line. Duncan, I don't know if you want to opine on that. I think, uh, well, basically just picking up on what you said, I think getting the gang back together and bringing other people in is kind of fun. And it was good to reconnect with people, in some cases I haven't seen for you know too long, let's say, uh, others not long enough, no, just kidding. Um, uh, I'm joking, okay. Uh, <laughs> you, um, I was going to suggest a little bit of scotch involved here, but I think that just went to water. Oh, virtual scotch. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but went no, to but, the, the column t uh, four so, instead of the eighteen, right? So, so well, anyway, stop it. Um, you're you're distracting me. Um, uh, if I haven't already distracted myself, but no, I, I think I love the idea of, of of revisiting this and looking out into the future again, but the world has changed quite significantly in the meantime. So, so, you know, who is the audience? What is this for? Or who is, or what is this for? Is, is really important because if we can't agree that maybe that tells us something that, you know, maybe it is, a, it is multifaceted and, and different people want to do or focus on different things. That's okay. Or, or maybe it is something where we can say, well, you know, when you talk about a statement, for example, Rob, I mean, you know, that sounds like something we, we all need to get behind if it's going to represent sort of some kind of, you know, cloud 2030 point of view or manifesto or whatever you want to say. Um, uh, because there are a lot of other, you know, 
not similar, but there are other activities that sort of, in some ways, um, uh, certainly overlap with this. Um, we're all involved in different things in our personal and um, mm -hmm. private and public, public life. Um, so what is it that's different and distinct about this um, uh, as well as, as everything else? Now, that's, as I, I know it's being quite sort of philosophical, but I guess, you know, after the sort of initial sort of, it was great last week sitting around for a couple of hours, just, you know, catching up with folks, but then, okay, let's try and sort of bring this into sharper, sharper focus somehow. And, I don't have the answer, but I'm good at asking questions, maybe. Do you, if you have a, if you have an idea, I'd love to hear it. Um, I, I have, I mean, I have an answer in my mind for this, but I, I don't want to jump ahead if, you know, I want to hear other people's views because I don't, I, I, mind, I, I feel concrete. I just need to maybe explain it. But what do you, what do you think? Are you well, asking me or just asking everybody? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm asking, well, I, you, but, but anybody, yeah. Well, just a, as a reference back to the original Cloud 2020, this was a reasonably small group of people all of whom were clearly either already very active in what was becoming, you know, quite a juggernaut with respect to the industry, or were ready to throw an immense amount of effort, people, money around the projects. So in some sense, what I would love to see with cloud 2030 is a community of users who are coming there not so much to get educated as to what has been done mm -hmm. but who are or are quite active in the in the process and i you know i'm reminded of the old you know alan k quote you know the best way to predict the future is to invent it and um you know, that's, I think that serves as kind of the, the message that I would enjoy seeing out of cloud 2030. True. And I guess back then, whilst cloud had become relatively well established, it was still pretty new for a lot of people, whereas now it's far from new. So what is exactly. it that we're adding? What is the new and interesting perspective we can bring mm -hmm. uh, to cloud if indeed we can. Um, right. Uh, but, but Duncan, let me be provocative to that. So in some ways, yes, cloud is not new. Um, but in other ways, cloud is still this, this kind of nebulous, really not well understood or leveraged mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sure, there are web scale and startup companies that have really kind of harnessed the power and there are some other corners and research and research computing that have done well. Um, but by far and large, I would argue that people have really only dipped their, their toe into the water at this stage. And there's still a lot of opportunity to try and figure out how it all comes together and where it fits in and where it doesn't fit in. Because let's not forget, you know, kind of going back to does the vendor drive it or the customer drive it? Cloud is not the end-all be-all for everything. And so there are a lot of vendors that have an ax to grind and a bias toward everything ends with cloud. You know, the short and the end of it is cloud. And so I think it's important to put this in perspective, especially if you're looking at it from the customer perspective and help guide people down that path, especially as we start looking at the fact that we're now incredibly more complicated as we think about edge to cloud and how it all comes together and how we manage data and how we manage applications. I mean, we are just starting down this journey. We're not Tim, well done. Tim, just to take a, a one step back, given what you've just said, who, once again, who would you see then as the attendees? Who is the audience here? So I think the, so let me take a step back from even that. So I think the benefactors of this effort are essentially every corporate entity. 
um, whether it be enterprise, whether it be um, vendor, customer, um, you know, either side of that equation. I'm sorry, benefactors or beneficiaries, recipients? So I was generically saying benefits from it. So then if you take the next step from that into okay. your question, um, then I would say that the different stakeholders will benefit in different ways. So if you look at it from a customer perspective, they're going to benefit from this and, and whoever it is that is driving that, that uh, innovation and strategy within the enterprise or within the uh, consumer of, of these technologies or products, um, those folks will benefit in that it'll provide them with guidance and insights. The vendors will benefit from this because it'll start to, it'll start to bring up the customer challenges in such a way that they haven't been able to, to tap into. They're really struggling to get their arms around and understand. You know, I tweeted something about this with Google. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Sorry, the days are kind of running together. Lack of sleep will do that. <laughs> but um, the, I, I said something like something to the effect of, you know, they're doing a lot of talking, but not doing a lot of listening. And I think in general, vendors are in that, that kind of mode, somewhat out of necessity, quite frankly, I don't necessarily fault them, but it's, I think they benefit from, the, from this type of event or this type of conversation because it provides overall guidance for them to get behind, contribute to, and ultimately benefit from. Did that answer your question, Rich? And Mr. Mm. Cross is here, so I will relinquish the floor. <laughs> Simon, welcome. And Larry. Hey, so Simon, you. we're I think you're I think you're muted. Zoom one oh one, you're on mute. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's, you know what it, it's that the Zoom app doesn't link with your hardware mute. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's so I think Tim is spot on. That is, I think, you know, this crowd of, of luminaries is not the crowd of luminaries that are building in the cloud. Okay, it's not, it's not, it's not Werner and Co. or Mark Rusinovich and Co. And if we invited them, they'd say, yeah, whatever. That is the eventuality. Everything's going to be running on our cloud. This group is the group which represents the users of the cloud, the, the enterprises who have real problems adopting, scaling, <clears throat> accounting for, um, skill set issues, the whole works. And in a funny sense, there needs to be a strong reaction to the cloud is the eventuality message, simply because there are so many enterprise issues in just adopting cloud. So I think this group here really represents um, that group of stakeholders, the enterprises, people who have real world, real world workloads and skill sets and all of those challenges and who are still struggling to get there. Hmm. Because Microsoft would just look at this bunch and say, yeah, whatever. So would Amazon. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. That's right. Well, and, and Oracle would just sue you. And Simon, to you know, to that point, that's that's part of the reason why I kind of went back to you know, what drives what? Does it you know? To, I, I forget who it was that asked the question earlier. You know, who's driving this? Is it is it from the vendor driving the customer, the customer driving the vendor? And I think no. if you do if you do take that that vendor engagement perspective. Sure, you know, if it's Amazon, Microsoft, Google, you know, pick your favorite, your favorite provider, you know, they, they all have certain biases, rightfully so, right? Yes. But uh, at, the, no. at the end of the day, I think the value we bring in this brain trust brings, because there's a heck of a lot of experience um, and knowledge from high level to in depth in the weeds seeing yeah. both sides of this equation that can really kind of tease apart those pieces from an unbiased perspective and say, how do we really benefit the customer? Because at the end of the day, that's who we all should be focused on. Yep, I agree. 
And, and they, the different cl major clouds have different approaches too in terms of customer acquisition. My, I mean, Amazon is very much based on the idea that next-gen apps and next-gen devs will build on Amazon. And so, Mr. CIO, here you go. This is the way it's going to be. Microsoft is trying to take its existing portfolio, of, well, its existing presence in the enterprise and morph that into a much more, well, whatever, a cloud-centric approach to solving customer problems. Oracle is doing something different and Google is off building browsers, right? So um, I think their philosophies influences discussion a lot. So how do we take these things, right? I mean, Tim, Simon, I, we, we have, right, we're saying we are, we're a community where we're trying to represent this listening area, right, where, where customers' needs aren't being listened. I think we're, we're clear on that. We, we're, we're creating a space for that. How do we, you know, and, and then I think it's important to write it down. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of driving towards a document because I, I think that, and this is one of my frustrations with conferences that I wanna undo in this format is conferences pull together a whole bunch of speakers who you know, vomit out their wisdom in PowerPoint and everybody nods their heads and leaves and there yeah. really isn't a way to have everybody discuss it and say, this is what I learned collectively. Um, and that's, and to me, the, the, the goal for, for this, what we're, what we're building here is for us to collectively come back, put something on the wall and let people you know, discuss it, poke on it. They don't have to agree the Congress <laughs> and and say but this is what we think is not getting heard so um, I think just I agree with you 100% I think discussions therefore panel type discussions with highly skilled um, you know panel organizers is really important because highly skilled panel organizers can beat the crap out of <laughs> lousy um, panelists, right? So people who are just spotting a company point of view. And you can use that approach to try and, you know, pull out threads which are worth keeping, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, one of the things I think this group could do is actually beat up on some of the cloud vendors and say, well, what about this or this or this, right? And get them to go on the record and, um, and say what they yeah. think. Well, and, and I was going to say, you know, Rob, I think if you're, if you're trying to make the conference product better, I, I worry that that's the wrong kind of lens to start with. Um, I think the, let me, let me just pose a different approach. And I mentioned this, I think it was in the last call, maybe it was a different conversation I was in, but think of it more like a, almost like a world economic forum type of approach instead, where oh, I like that. there's collaborative engagement on a global level, such that you're working toward a common goal, common objective, and the sessions are more engaged and collaborative rather than just a presentation. You know, it's not just, I show up and here's my experience and here's my perspective, mm. and sure, you can ask some Q and A at the end, but that's not necessarily gonna change anything for anyone. Or you can say you're having these, these more engaged collaborative conversations and working groups that kind of spin out from it. Because you know, I, I made this little diagram, I don't, sorry, it's kind of hard to see. But um, the idea being that, you know, if you think Oops, of- that was like, what Cloud 2030, Edge 2030, Data 2030, each of these are four pieces that are ultimately gonna drive where businesses go. Yeah, I don't need to see my face that big. But, um, <laughs> um, so anyway, I- That's a I good think, idea you know, though. Rob, I... think, of a different, think of a different context of something that rather than just trying to kind of reinvent the conference. Yeah. Oh, and, I, and, and what I'm, what I'm, what I see is we have an opportunity to not just reinvent the con you and I are saying the same thing. I, I think this format allows us to do what Simon's talking about and have bring people together who would be hard to get on stage together 
into a discussion and have a have a reverse the reverse the mic conversation where anybody can show up and talk about something i and to and then stretch it out with time so it doesn't have to be i can't make it to las vegas on november 16th right it's it so, says all right so, let's, so tim let's, is tim is adding a really cool thing which is okay. to get an agenda on the big problems laid out ahead of time mm -hmm. and then everybody knows what the big problems are that need to be solved right and so, so attending is all about solving those problems which is a cool idea and so how do we how do we get because right so in this meeting right we're, we've made it about logistics which is which is good because i want to i want to organize those topics right we, we have to figure out those topics and then we have to find leaders who want to help organize a discussion around those topics and pull in people who, who are frankly going to draw an audience that'll, that'll make it more exciting to, to be part of that conversation. Um, and then those things to me will lead into, you know, the forum, the, the economic, you know, the, the, I still think of, I'm, I, I'm playing with words on this, but the, the cloud 2030 forum, um, where, what's our next step? Because I, I don't, I want to, I want to start doing the topics. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to keep talking so, about doing the topics. So, so Rob, I would focus oh, less. Oh, for, so I, yeah. I would say right now, deep focus, who to bring in that will attract the audience. Forget about that for a minute. I don't think that should be our, our focus. I would okay. focus more on the content and the context, because if you get that right, it will naturally attract those people because they already get it. They don't, they just don't necessarily have the, the forum in which to engage. So what you're doing is essentially saying, look, we're taking, as Simon said, more eloquently than I did, we're taking those big problems and we're trying to solve them. And here are the big problems that, that we are facing on, on a global level, right? Mm -hmm. If you use the, the World Economic Forum kind of model, right? Here are the ah, big, okay. hairy objectives we're trying to, to get at. And then here are the ways that we're using a straw man. We're looking for folks to come in and collaborate. You will start to attract the people that are really passionate about it. And frankly, that, I think that's the best way to do it because you're gonna get people that already have the energy to collaborate and engage with it and have that, that bigger mindset rather than yeah. just max to grind. And the other thing is you're not trying to pull someone in and then constantly having to put energy into them to say, oh, come on, Rich, come on, Rich, come on, Rich, come on, Rich. I mean, that's just gonna be it's the very end accurate. of it. It's very accurate using Rich's name here. Yeah. Oh, ouch. Okay. <laughs> I'm Rich, I'm sorry on, Rich. that I come used on, Rich. you. Is... Yeah, you'll pay. Yeah, you'll pay. I will. I think that's you a good idea. Won't know when, so what, no where, but so what you're never. saying, Tim, is then you would um, try and get agreement on the big hairy mm -hmm. things in the room, right? But what you're describing yes, is we don't even have to do that. We just we're we're going to put out a call, and I, I like this idea. We'll put out a call for problems. Yeah, exactly. And, or failures. Then, ooh, <laughs> yes. I I don't. So I don't think you have to do that because I go back to okay. something that Duncan said. Um, you know, who is this for and why? Right. Right. And if we forget, let's, I don't think we need more voices right now. I think that will unfortunately just devolve into too much group think. But okay. if we focus on who this is to serve and why, that will start to help guide us on what some of those big issues are. And quite frankly, I think of the group that I'm looking at right now, I'll bet you a dozen donuts that, sorry, I went to Duncan. Um, I'll bet you a dozen, a dozen donuts that we can come up with a pretty darn good list with this group without involving one more person into it. I'm not saying not to involve more people. I'm just saying when you start out, start small, get that straw man built. And then once you have something other than a blank sheet of paper, then go out more broadly and say, okay, this is what we think it is, but help guide us. Help guide us. Are we missing something? Should we refine something? Should we drop something off of this? But don't start with a blank sheet of paper and invite 
a so bunch of people into so, it. So, Tim, if we then took the, um, like we, we have a topic for the 27th, take the meeting after that, make that a, the call for problems session and spend an hour brainstorming out these problems. Is that what you're, what you're suggesting? Do we need, you know, do we need to spend more time going backwards for the audience or is, because this is going to be iterative. So yeah. do a call for problems, sit down, you know, do it and then start parceling out who wants to lead the problems. Cause I, I guess in my mind, it's very concrete. We're going to have weekly discussions. We create, we have a space for that. We need the topics for the discussions. Um, I don't, I don't have a problem formalizing it. I also don't have a problem if we want to go and have, you know, a, an extra meeting to say, let's talk about what the problems are and define them. Um, but there was quite a lot of content from the brainstorming last week, which we should uh, drop because I think in amongst there are a bunch of these topics. Um, the other thing is, you, you know, maybe you view the weekly things as um, almost like, uh, well, you may not like the idea, but almost a way of a dress rehearsal for actually then revisiting these problems mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the context of a bigger event. Um, because it's not like you can solve any of these if they're serious problems like sustainability, build back better, those kinds of things in, in, right. in a one hour weekly or one hour session. But we can at least maybe, um, yeah. yeah I, think to, to, to me, you can spend an hour figuring out what the argument points are. Right. Mm -hmm. a, good, a good discussion gets to a point where you're like, we don't agree on this. And then, and then you, that becomes part of your thing, or you say, we all agree on it really strongly, write it down, move on. Um, to part of the weekly is if we don't, but if we don't budget time for it and provide- No, no, I'm, a, not, I'm not disputing yeah, that. I'm just saying you don't have to do something in one or the other. I mean, huh? you can do the weekly so, session. Well, as, as but here's, I mean, so as. I, I agree. We came up with these great topics here. I mean, for me, it's, it's people in, right now are is somebody want to come in and say i want to spearhead this problem statement that we identified and then run a series of three or four discussions you know it, whether it's a panel whether it's bringing in a, a speaker um bring those bring that in so that we you know i that's what i need help with i i don't want to be maybe, the the <coughs> organizer for all so those maybe, topics maybe I'm not, those are I'm not good. the expert Maybe there's a great starting point and maybe it's a list which is incomplete, but I think there is value in um, perhaps those of us with particular skills or, or understanding taking on one of those and expanding it mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. bringing it back um, to be picked apart by this group and then you can take it out. Yep. So it's not, a, we're at baby steps level, right? Let's go and really add flesh to the problem statements. And um, I like Tim's idea that essentially this is a problem solving conference or, or agenda. We haven't got really great statements about what the problems are. Right. And maybe what you do then is you say, cool, Duncan, take this thing. Uh, go and figure it out, and then come back with a bigger problem statement. So I, I like that idea, Simon. Um, you know, I, I want to suggest something, but I'm also trying to be realistic that the next two weeks for me are going to be hell um, because it's finishing things for this house and moving, leading to Labor Day. So my time is incredibly constrained. Um, but I wanted to suggest that. I'll just take a stab at a straw man on the context, on what the context is and circulate it. You know, what, what do we think some of those big problems are? I'll go through the notes and, and articulate, here's what I think the big problems are. Again, you know, for me- you From know, my whose point of be, view, Tim? From well, that's for just, everybody? That's what I was just gonna say. You know, I, I'm probably gonna be more biased from the customer perspective, but then mm -hmm. bring in some vendor components to it. Um, just because that's, and you know, those of you that, that know me well know that I'm just, I just kind of eat, um, exude Isn't customer. about the customer anyway. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I think Tim here is 
it represents maybe the, the pointy edge of a bunch of CIO talent, which we really need to expose to this broad set of problems, right? And get them to agree. Yep. So I think that'd be useful. And, and yeah, you're, once, you're the proxy. Go ahead, Duncan. No, I, was, I think that's, I think someone's right. You're, you're in many ways a proxy for that audience and that's a good audience to go for. Um, um, because it's an audience that can actually make a difference, actually get on. Well, these are the folks who have problems adopting cloud yeah, or levers, successes yeah. or failures. And so yeah. if we're not going to be cloud guys, we have to be responsive to the potential users and customer base. Yeah. Yeah. And that means Tim's cohort. Well, the other thing is, once this is, a, this is more developed, then I can reach out to some folks and bring them into. Mm -hmm. So, Tim, I'm, I'm happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one if you want, and we can spend an hour brainstorming together on this, um, or however you want to do it. Um, I, I'll leave the document open for edit or wherever we want to do it. Um, but what I would suggest is let's codify the problem list in two weeks on this. I know it's, it's a hell, it's hell for you. And if you want, we can put it to three weeks. Um, but if you can spare an hour, you know, I can help you, you know, we can, we can brainstorm it and I can help clean it up. Uh, it sounds like other people on the list are willing to, to organize also, and we can coordinate, uh, you know, coordinate back. Hey, we're, we're doing something on this. Um, but yeah, let's get these problem statements in two weeks. We'll review the problem statements and then start parceling them out uh, and have, have people decide that they're actionable. And that's yeah. actually the beginning of, and I, we're at the top of the hour, that's mm -hmm. the beginning of what the, the, the session, the forum, the Congress, whatever we want to call it, will be, is going to be reviewing these problem statements and organizing around them. Um, I think that's great, actually. Yep. Excellent. Sounds like a good. I got a bail. I'm yeah, afraid. I, I got you, uh, Rob. Sorry, I was multitasking there, but yep. No worries. Sounds just, good. Just we'll we'll work one on one. Find it. Sounds time. good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. See good guys. to see you all. See you, everybody. Bye. It's a good, Bye. good start. It's always that comfortable uh, shifting gears from one meeting to another, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, and part of part of what my goal is for for any of these discussions is that there should be some hallway track. So, use the first first ten minutes of the meeting to do. You know, have you seen? Oh my God! You know, get, you know that that type of hallway hallway track thing, and then. Uh, before we get into the meat of it, it also allows me to finish. No, it. To <laughs> Rob, have you tried out yeah, any of the yeah. voice kind of voice meeting room kind of breakout room um, services that are available? You know, kind of the the coffee tables set up off off in the in the in a virtual space. Not with the avatars, but I mean, just generally, <laughs> I can deal without the avatars. <laughs> uh, I, I look, I've, I've looked at them a little bit. Have you played with them? I took a look at took a look at a few of them, and they, there there were a few that looked actually um, pretty interesting. In that, you basically kind of set up uh, areas where you could kind of mm, lurk as opposed to kind of sit down and join in at the table, mm -hmm. but you could kind of move around from conversation to conversation pretty easily. And, you know, the, the visual cue was basically a set of tables or a set of groupings uh, where individuals were identified by a handle or, you know, a, um, an abbreviation of, you know, a screen name or something like that. Right. Like a, yeah, not bad. an avatar with a picture. Have you have you actively have you actually actively done it? Uh, just in demos. No, the avatars, okay. the ones with avatars, I just avoid. You know, it's a it, it's a religious issue with me. You know, I just uh, I don't I don't want an avatar. I really don't. Rick or Rich, I'm sorry, it's Katrinka mm -hmm. here. Um, what type? What are the names of the apps that you've looked at? 
or plugin. Yeah. Um, let me just see if I can pull that list up again. Oh, I'm going to find my list too. Because that would be really kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 can I get that? Yeah, here's the link. I've, I'm going to post a couple links. I've, I found one called uh, Gather Town. Gather town. Um, mm -hmm. And the other one is called Kala, Spatialized Voice Chat. Yes, that's one I, one I saw as well. Okay. And then Andrea has me set up, or actually Andrea's husband, Walter, has me set up with Toucan. So I'm going to yes. drop off at uh, 11.30 to go see what they have to offer. That's so fun. Yeah, they're terrific. Cool. Hi, Katrinka. How are you? I'm good. So Rob, Katrinka, and Walter all went to Fuqua together. Ah, oh, excellent. That's and so Rob nice. went to Duke in the 90s, I believe. And his daughter is about to go there. That's cool. Picking a gap year as a wise precaution at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but that is exactly right. Oh, I need to open this up. Okay, so Katrinka's new to the group, so we need to explain to her what we're doing here, too. But she just retired from Red Hat, I understand. Yes, I did. Take when did this, that happen? The beginning of the summer, and then I kind of took the summer off, which has been really <laughs> a really nice thing to do. Um, I highly recommend a break for everybody. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I'm sort of now getting back into things and starting to build a sort of plan to for board service or the next gig, whatever that might be, so. So the very, very simple one that I found that actually didn't look too bad as a demo was something called Voice Room. Hmm. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll put it, I'll put a link in. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Awesome. Voice.room? Uh, voice Room one word dot US. Uh, my son was making a prototype of a of uh, this. That's why I was I did some research into it because he was he was playing with this idea of you could like wander around a space and hear left and right ears and things like mm -hmm. that. So yeah, it's a, I think it would be super interesting from a hallway track. That's, exactly. that's how we got on this topic. For, mm -hmm. for those those just joining, oops, uh, promoting everybody into panelists. Mm -hmm. Since the trinka's new, I'll just let you know. You'll see two Shane Gibsons here. The guy is so prominent; he makes two of himself. Um, <laughs> Shane is one of the co-founders of Racken, and you'll see Jeanette, um, who's our chief operating officer and CFO. Hi, everyone. Hello, Jay. Hello. Hi. I couldn't get Zoom dialing on my phone to behave. The That's why we have two in of them. Love. <laughs> yes. It's pretty great. I'm doubly interested in this topic. You I'm love it of, so much. <laughs> cloud 2030 and Cloud 2060. And then I know Tim and From Rick and Keith, but I kind of forget how you all kind of came to Rob. You want to do Who's it? Rob? Who's Rob? That guy? <laughs> and <of> strangers. <laughs> so I'm Keith Braddock. I came to Rob through good grief. Rob, Larry and Sherry. Or, no, I came through Larry, which I've met Sherry. But anyway, so I'm the annoying, um, I don't know what the heck I am, um, guy that just kind of lurks in and causes, you know, asks difficult questions to because I'm trying to actually solve problems that Bring, annoy the crap of out of me. much wisdom has been my experience. Just, nah, that's just, it's that, that, I'm not, I, I basically am transparent. You, you find out what, what's bugging me on a given day based on the question I ask. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Keith, where's your day job? My day job uh, is a company I just launched uh, called Aspect Core. Cool. Um, based in Metro Atlanta. 
Cool. And uh, we do, we are actually are, um, uh, we are MSP and cool. advisory. Um, and so we are bringing the whole, our whole proposition. And it's funny that Rob, you guys talked about this last week or one couple weeks ago. I can't remember now. I'm losing track of time in COVID. I <laughs> really months, literally yeah. do not know. Um, our, our, our biggest thing is for small to medium sized businesses, um, as well as community banks and credit unions, we provide services that allow them to be cloud agnostic. So we have a management um, layer um, that allows them to go between all of the major carriers and the second tier carriers. And that, that, that transition is transparent to them. And so there you go. There's a, um, there's a Twitter thread I'm going to post in the chat for you to chime in on then. No, no, <laughs> no. All right. Then I, I won't do it. I'm, I'm just sorry. joking. I was joking. Larry did that to me once with, um, with the other Keith as we, as I call him. And I ended up getting in a debate with Keith Townsend on something because Larry sucked at me into it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually need to throw this in the multi-cloud. There's um, Sarveet who does an amazing job pulling these discussions together. Did one asking for uh, what's the best multi-cloud orchestration today? And he, he said, you can't give none is the answer. And I'm like. And Rob, I think you mean instigating those conversations instigating is he's the provocateur yes yes, yes. i mean let's call it what it is yeah no that's true is it a hey, based on your based on this twitter question would it be um too techno arrogant for me to say my company no um <laughs> i actually you sh i would do it i would just, I, yeah, just be prepared okay. to defend defend the. Direction. Yeah, I, mean, I know. We're, <laughs> I know. We're, we're gonna have a whole a whole topic thread on um, on multi cloud. So I I think that that's I'm gonna repost it there. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. where is someone? And Rich, do you want to give Katrinka a quick background on you, real quick? It just can't be quick. <laughs> Not for Rich. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am a uh, longtime resident of Silicon Valley, serial offender. Um, started out as a um, designer of upper layer protocols. Um, I'm responsible for the reason we have spam in email. Uh, so that's how far back I go. I've been a running strategic consultancies for a long time um, and in between I start up companies. So the more recent areas that I work in for I would say the last 20 years have been um, grid computing into cloud computing, data grids into big data, um, basically what now would be thought of as data engineering. Um, last significant startup was about eight years ago called Streetlight Data, which um, is basically Google Analytics, but for brick and mortar. Um, and uh, the most recent is a company called Provenant Data, which is um, focused on care and feeding of the data set. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. And Tim, just what, a little teeny bit about you. Teeny bit. There's nothing teeny about Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mean to insult it. Except as he goes. Except as he goes. Do you notice the big head? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, sorry. So, and I apologize for the echo. I'm in a vacant house. Uh, we just closed escrow on a new house yesterday. And so nothing in it, but it's like echo is all heck. So I'll join as long as I can too, because unfortunately I'm multitasking. Uh, so Tim Crawford, I, I know a couple of you on the call. Um, you know, Rob and I go back a few years. We've both been part in Rich too. Um, God, Rich and I go back. I hazard to say how long, um, but 
it's uh, it's been a while. And so the work that I do is really kind of focused on the perspective of the CIO. So I'm a former CIO. I've led IT organizations most of my 30 years um, and for large enterprise. And so I look at it from the customer perspective. Most of the conversations that I have today, I, I run a consultancy that is focused on the CIO perspective and, and helping guide large enterprise organizations. Um, so think of it as CIO at large. And so it's, it's really kind of focused around what is the agenda of the executive team and how does that fit into their strategy and, and kind of where they go. Rob, I was trying to remember, did, when and where did you and I meet first? Were you still at Dell? I was still, uh, I think I was. It was one of the early IBM, it was one of the IBM um, Cloud Minds events. Right. That's, that's who we're missing from, from the Cloud 2030 stuff. I haven't, I haven't strong-armed Amy into putting her unique stamp in. Um, but I, I, I need to do that at some point. Amy Hermes is a force, so. Absolutely. To... Morning, Duncan. Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are. Um, so slightly more civilized time for me. Uh, it's, not, it's still daylight, um, <laughs> um, unlike last week. Um, so, sorry, I was just grabbing a coffee. Um, are we doing intros or just saying good morning? Intros would be great, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, so I think we also met, Rob must have been through Cloud Minds, I guess. Uh, uh, so common cause with what Rob's doing or has been doing for many years is uh, interest from my point of view, and now three companies uh, um, sort of, I guess, scratching this particular itch is around, you know, how do you uh, improve the overall uh, operations, automation, uh, and of course, these days that includes cloud, um, not exclusively, but it's a big part of the puzzle. Um, first startup was trying to do that based on autonomics, if you remember that back in the day. So the, um, the idea of closed loop management. And at the time we were doing that, there wasn't a lot of support. APIs uh, and tools didn't really exist, but obviously over the last 20 odd years, that's that's developed amazingly. Um, previous to current company VTP Blockchain Technology Partners, I founded um, a company called CloudSoft, which is still going strong. That uh, contributed, for better or worse, inflicted on the world uh, an Apache project called Brooklyn that was uh, was or is because it's still going. Um, you know, aiming at trying to uh, capture model applications and then obviously handle not just the deployment but ongoing management. Um, left that a few years ago and started a company in June of 2018, really focusing on same same idea, but instead of trying to make cloud easier to consume for people, let's see if we can make blockchain and associated technologies, DLTs, smart contract layers easier to use because we want people to actually get value out of technology and um, although some people absolutely love building scaffolding and will happily do that all day long. That's from a business point of view, going back to what Tim was saying, if you're an enterprise, that's not terribly good use of your, your team's time, even though they love doing it and would be far happier rolling their sleeves up using rack end to build things from literally electrons up, okay. you know? Um, uh, but uh, so that's the background and obviously uh, was roped into this first time around, I think possibly by, either Rich or Strategic Blue or some combination. I've known Rich, we can say, we can work out who's known Rich uh, the longest we like. I remember meeting you, Rich, when we were thrown together by... Um, uh, around Adlers? The Preschool? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it was uh, at the old Jack Tar Hotel and it was an open, one of the earliest open source software meetings and we were and you were doing Grid at the time. With I was the, doing Grid. As a matter of fact, I was wow. just about to start start Unova. So that's yep. got to be 2003, yep. 2002. Something like that. Yeah. So that's great. Interesting times, and obviously, you know, Grid was 
fascinating in its day, but cloud kind of trumped that. Absolutely. And now we have things like Kubernetes, which is where we spend most of our lives. It's a reasonable thing. I was, I was going to 